Hello and welcome to this video. I am going to uh, present a brief introduction to the basic notions of Kanban system and present an illustrative example on how to calculate the number of containers that are required for a simple uh, production system. The Kanban system is a system that is based on uh, the concept of Kanban, which is a card in Japanese language, and the concept of containers, which are uh, placeholders, which hold a percentage of the daily production of one single item. So it is basically a system to control the flow of production in a factory. In general, we attach one Kanban card to its container for items that are going to be produced. And whenever the uh, production, the assembly line is finishing with that container, then the card is being removed from the container. And this is, a, as you can imagine, a continuous cycle throughout the day. The objective of using such a system is to design a lean uh, layout in order to minimize waste, either it be on time, on material, or on cost. So waste is not only, uh, let's say, uh, garbage in terms of material, but it might be uh, waste in terms of time or cost. So our goal is to optimize the production flow in the factory by using a lean methodology. Let me present a few, uh, in a few uh, steps the basic idea behind the Kanban system. In general, we have one storage area we have one fabrication, one fabrication cell, an area that uh, uh, produces the, uh, or fills the containers. And we have the assembly line that uh, uses the containers in order to uh, produce the final products. So in our storage area, we have some empty containers. And at uh, the same time, we have some Kanban cards for every type of product. So in this simplified example, we have only one product and we use one a blue card to signify that product in uh, empty containers. So what we do is we uh, map the empty container with a Kanban card and we pass this empty container to the fabrication cell. In the fabrication cell, we can find some operation lines its line is taking some containers and they are uh, filling them with the spare parts that are required. So the fabrication cell is actually uh, filling the containers with the parts that are necessary in order to continue the process. As soon as they fill the containers, they pass them to the storage area in order to be available for the assembly line. So as you can see here, uh, the operations of the fabrication cells have generated, some have uh, populated, have filled some containers. So those containers are waiting in the storage area for the assembly line to pick them and use them. So the assembly line is also, uh, can be split into some assembly lines in two or three or uh, according to our production needs. So each one is picking one full container and uses the components, the parts, in order to uh, produce the final product. And as soon as one container is uh, turning empty, then we pass it again to the storage area in order to be filled again from the fabrication cell and so on. So as you can see here, we are uh, talking about a cycling uh, a process that is continuously operating uh, through a cycle, uh, cycled uh, approach throughout the day, throughout the operation uh, cycle. One important uh, decision that uh, management uh, has to, to take here is what is the number of containers that uh, optimizes the process? And of course, what is the number of units that each container might hold? Those two decisions uh, define, determine the size of production and the inventory level. The more the containers, uh, as you can understand, the different uh, type of inventory we need to keep. And of course, the more the units in, in uh, every container, the larger uh, the size of the production per unit. Uh, in order to uh, be able to calculate the 
number of containers, we need to uh, use some uh, empirical laws. One of those is the Littles law, which is giving that the working process inventory is a part of, uh, it consists, comprises of two parts, the safety stock and the product of average demand rate, multiplied by the average time that a container spends in the manufacturing process. So if we combine some empirical uh, facts, we can derive this formula for the number of containers per part. So as you can see here, we have a fraction. It's not necessary to focus on how we, uh, how we get this fraction, but let's focus on trying to uh, identify those variables. So the number of containers that we uh, are supposed to use is given by the letter K. D is the expected daily demand in units for every part. The average weight in line for the replenishment of parts is given by the uh, Greek letter omega. By the Greek letter R, R uh, we have the average time to produce a container of parts, and alpha and C are giving the safety stock uh, and the capacity of the container. So we don't actually need to, I repeat, we don't actually need to find out how we generate this formula, but how to use it. So let's uh, just uh, figure out that uh, the decision that a manage, uh, the managerial team uh, will take on A and C affect the inventory stock and the size of the production lot. So those are the managerial decisions that are uh, the most important. Now let's uh, go through an example to see how we work this out and uh, calculate the number of containers required. Assuming that we have a company that produces uh, one part, one single part, uh, for use in a car brake system, which is part of a manufacturing, a car manufacturing uh, company. A typical container spends 0.01 day, and uh, we need to express that in a fraction of a day in processing, which means that our, if I go back here, the processing is what the fabrication cell is actually uh, spending in order to uh, fill one container and 0.05 day in materials handling and waiting during the manufacturing cycle. So this one is what the assembly line is uh, spending in order to uh, fulfill its own uh, process. The daily demand for the part is 1,000 units. That's pretty clear. And the management thinks that uh, the demand for this part is not certain enough, so they need to uh, keep a safety stock of roughly 10% of its authorized inventory. Now, the question here is that if its container contains 12 parts of uh, this uh, part, how many containers should we authorize? And if there is a proposal to revise the manufacturing by reducing materials handling and waiting time per container to 0.04 day per uh, day, how many containers would be needed in such a case? Well, first of all, we need to define the variables that we need in order to work out this formula. As we can see here, the question asks how many containers we are actually uh, needing, need, in, uh, in order to uh, fulfill the needs of our production. So the question is asking for the number of containers. So if we check our formula, uh, we are speaking about the variable K. Next, we need to define what is the uh, daily demand, which is given by D. And as we can see here in our problem, it is equal to 1000. Next, we need to identify the average waiting time for replenishment of parts, which is, should be expressed as a fraction of a day. In our problem, is being given as 0.05 day. Next, we need to define what is the average time to produce a container of parts, which is the variable named with the Greek letter R. From our problem, we see that this is 0.01 per day. Not per day, sorry, expressed in days. Next, we are uh, checking the safety stock, which is 10%, and 
and is being a holding variable A. And finally, we want to clarify the capacity of the container. From our problem, we see that in our first question, the capacity of every container is 12. So if we combine all those numbers in our equation, we see that for the first uh, question, if we perform all the calculations, uh, the number of containers is equal to 5.5. As we said before, the number of containers cannot be a decimal, so we have to round it either to, uh, let's say, uh, the next integer up or down. Well, uh, here, as you can see, we're not rounding down, but rounding to the 6. But sometimes we might select rounding down, because if you, uh, depends on the inventory, or uh, our operation uh, constraints. So it doesn't mean that whenever I have 5.6, uh, I round up, but it's a managerial decision, as I said before. In the second question, if we replace those numbers, we see that the required number of containers is equal to 4.5. And again, we select to round it up to five containers. So I think that I gave you an illustrative example on how to work the Kanban system and the calculation of the number of containers by using a very simplified example. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening.